All right, let's take a look at a NUC here, um, and this is going to be short because it's running live off a USB stick, and I'm recording directly on it with Simple Screen Recorder, and I don't have a lot of storage space. So I picked up the NUC 5PPYB, which has a quad-core Intel Pentium processor N3700. I mean, this is like older from years ago but it was like 50 bucks and I just wanted to give uh, a knock a try and um, so you can probably get something way more powerful obviously uh, and uh, you're looking at a processor base frequency 1.6 gigahertz with a burst of 2.4 gigahertz I have a 4 gigabyte stick of RAM in here that I had laying around and then, then there's a I don't know a 19 volt or so power supply I've got a USB hub on it, keyboard, mouse, uh, a B205 mini plugged in, and the headset that I'm talking on. So a couple things with uh, this new ISO that I'm working on, Dragon OS Focal R13. Um, I added, uh, after talking with the, uh, or making sure that it was okay, uh, the Pi SDR. Uh, I thought this would be perfect to add to Dragon OS as you're learning about software, define radios, and digital signal processing because um, there's a lot of Python in here and so this Pi SDR guide is included in here now and it's a shortcut under other. Uh, you click on Pi SDR it's going to open up in a local browser and so then you kind of got a class where you can learn while you're messing with software defined radios and uh, so I think this is a great guy by uh, this gentleman here and yeah so that's in there and runs just fine uh, go down through kind of get an idea of the speed here I guess you'd um, it's all like local so should be pretty fast but so there, there's a uh, that is in there and just to kind of show how uh, how this kind of stacks up against the uh, let me see the pie that I was trying uh, so I have let's see Falcon here uh, which I there is a shortcut to it under other but I like to go into the user source Falcon uh, build source GUI I think it is and run it just so that I can see that everything is working okay so I already have a frequency that I specified here and just to kind of show I mean it's not um, you know on par with the you know pretty powerful laptop but it does work as long as it finds a cell here so Falcon was the fast uh, analysis of LTE control channels I think is what that stands for and so I just like to kind of see what's going on here and um, so you know for the most part yeah, and I don't have uh, the UE turned on and try it one more time here so So, all right, you can see it's decoding and you see some activity. So, okay, that's Falcon and B205 on uh, running live from USB on the uh, Intel NUC. Let's close this out. And something I, I've only really shown when I've actually had the Kerberos hooked up is something called DF Aggregator and I have it here linked to the directory and so I installed uh, cesium uh, offline with a very basic map set according to the directions that uh, DF aggregator provided so let's take a look at some of the options here and this is really meant uh, to use with a, a Kerberos SDR that I've shown um, before and this is uh, like the mapping engine and the um, interface that you would use to uh, reach out across the network to your Kerberos SDR units and I'm just going to start this up so you need to at least specify a file and, and I'll just do it offline so no receivers I just want to show the mapping engine and I'll leave it the default IP and port and so this will run and if I pull up a browser one twenty seven zero zero one 
or at 8080. We'll see this load up. And we'll give it a second. And it'll use the um, default map set that's in here. That's very, very basic. Um, but it but it's something and this is all can be run offline and then if you click up here and you have good uh, speed and uh, you know the storage space and whatnot you can click on these maps and get better uh, imagery and so uh, globe and stars looks uh, kind of familiar so let's see um, something else I'll show that's built into here is uh, and this is something you can do if you don't have any SDRs and you just want to mess around is uh, RDF uh, simulator or RDF sim and let's see so we'll run this and it's going to start up on port 8081 I'll open it in another browser and it is a um, little practical exercise uh, it's telling you you got a single mobile transmitter with a regular transmit cycle of one minute active three minutes idle so what do you do with this well if you click on uh, this link here and you copy and paste it which is basically giving you the same info that a uh, Kerberos SDR and you come here and you add a receiver you paste it in maybe Let's see okay and I'll save that and so that's getting information from RDF sim and I'll see if I can get maybe a different map set here all right well while that's doing that uh, let's put another DF station on here Another one. So now we got two stations. And we're getting our lobs here, and you can adjust the minimum power confidence. Um, we can lower this down and see where the uh, points are going to be there we go alright So we can see the transmitter is active. Lines are green now. They're um, pretty much lining up right here. Points. There we go. I just need to hit refresh. And once they're enough, once there is enough, then it should give you an idea which you can kind of tell where it's at now um, let's see you can adjust these uh, let's see so you know, definitely in this area anyways uh, just to kind of give you something uh, to do when you don't have an SDR and you're maybe inside and you're wanting to use Dragon OS so this is uh, perfect uh, to get familiar with especially after you've read the uh, Pi SDR and then you can have a look and really appreciate all the uh, code that has went into uh, RDF sim and uh, DF aggregator by the developer uh, that you can find uh, by looking up DF 
aggregator and you can find the page here and it mentioned on RTL SDR. So that's just a few things uh, that uh, are going to be uh, at least in or updated in the new ISO. And I guess just to give you an idea, let's see, let's take a look at uh, something kind of familiar with GQRX. Try this. I don't really. So this is the B205 Mini. And the audio works really well, and everything seems pretty smooth. That's a GQRX. All right, well, that's just a look at uh, some of the things uh, and uh, in the new ISO that uh, I need to just get around to uploading and then also just taking a look at it running on the uh, Intel NUC. All right, thanks.